Look at the front where it says Ames real big. Greetings from the Outer Banks. We are in Kill Devil Hills and we're at the infamous Outer Banks Kmart. This place means a lot to me. I can't tell you how many times I've shopped in this place since 1994. I'm going to be sad I can't do it anymore after this, but. That's why we came here. We drove all the way down here from Pittsburgh to the Outer Banks just to film this place, support it, spend our money there, and get to experience this place one last time. And well, for me, for Kayla, this is her first time, and sadly, yeah, but I'm at least glad I could bring Kayla here to show her this awesome store. And so I could see it one last time in my favorite place in the entire world, the Outer Banks. So let's go check it out. All right, here it is from far back. You can see the whole building, including the beach shop signage. Truly one of a kind to have a beach shop. And you'll see on the back side of the building that it has the old Kmart logo, which they never took down. I've always loved this parking lot. It's like a maze with the grass that they planted and the shrubs and hedges and stuff. Kind of zigzag through. <laughs> but here is the legendary beach shop signage that they have here at this location, which makes it one of a kind. And then on the back side of the building, I will show you the old style Kmart logo. Yep, here's your garden center. Well, beach shop. Yep, back here, the old Kmart logo still exists, which is awesome. Glad they never took that down. So if you're on the beach road, you could actually see it. So thought that was pretty cool. They still have the Kmart carousel. Oh, where's Richard and Kara when you need them? <laughs> Kayla's in the car because she's cold. <laughs> oh, man. I would so totally ride this thing. It's awesome. <laughs> and the old truck. Cool. All right. Let's do this. Yeah. All right, we'll walk through this door. There you go. The Outer Banks Kmart, you know? <laughs> did take out Little Caesars. Yeah. And Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> Even in North Carolina. <laughs> the old call box. Wow, one of the most profitable ones in the company. Literally, even when they had a couple thousand stores, this was one of the most profitable ones. The Lion King. <laughs> I 
Yeah, so I'm going through the uh, cart. I can't believe how many tiles are stained in here. I guess, I guess Sears Holdings and Transform didn't want to pay to fix the roof in here. Hi everybody, I just wanted to pop on to the video here and narrate just a little bit here. Not only because I'm concerned with the fact that with the overhead music this video could get copyrighted and... I don't want that to happen, so, but I just wanted to talk about this store a little bit, what it meant to me, and take you guys along a little virtual walking tour of this place. First of all, you may have heard me mention how the ceiling tiles, a lot of them were stained. That was one thing that grabbed my attention from, from the start when I first walked in the doors on this trip down to the Outer Banks last week. One thing that I noticed was they were all over the store, and years ago it wasn't like that. And the reason I'm even addressing that really uh, is to point a finger at Sears Holdings here. Why didn't they invest in this store? Why didn't they invest in fixing the roof? This is in a coastal area that's known to get hurricanes and nor'easters. And, you know, I have friends that live on the Outer Banks that are always talking about, oh, well, we have to repair this or that. That's going to happen in a coastal environment, so why didn't ESL do anything to fix the roof here and just let it decay? Anyway, I don't want to bash anymore. I, I actually want to talk good about this store and because it really is a good store. It really was anyway. When I was here in early March 2020 here, it was a bittersweet time for me. I was very excited to come back to the Outer Banks. I was very excited to revisit this store after a couple of years of not being down here, not being able to make it. And you know why. If, you're, if you've been around with the channel for long enough, you know I lost my father a couple of years ago and I was dealing with that. And I had other things in life take over and the Outer Banks was just kind of on the back burner because it costs a lot of money to go down there, especially if you're there for several days. Uh, thankfully, in the off season, it doesn't. And, you know, this was kind of a last minute call for me. I didn't know that I'd be doing this. I figured, oh, in the summertime, I'll come down here under normal operations and give you guys a nice video for it. I didn't think I would have to hurry up and take four days to go down there and do this. But I wanted to, not just for me, but for you guys. I really wanted to see this store personally one last time, but I also wanted to share it with you guys if you had never seen this place, if you never seen it in person or on video. I know a few people have filmed this place, and I wanted to do my spin on it because it meant a lot to me. And here's why I'll say that. For me, this was a destination. Every single time... My family and I would go to the Outer Banks all the way back to 1994, the first time I ever went to Nags Head, North Carolina. My mom, dad, brother, and my grandfather and I, we would come to this store. We made it mandatory that we stopped here because this store had every day essentials that we would need for our week-long or two-week-long stay at the Outer Banks, whether we needed some food or sunscreen or clothes to wear at the beach. Uh, including swim trunks that I actually got here years ago. And they actually lasted me quite long. Um, we would come here to check out the beach shop because they had so many cool toys for the beach. Boogie boards, skim boards, uh, beach towels, and toys like sand, toys like for sand castles and whatnot, shovels, things to catch ghost crabs with. They had all of that here because back then... Even though gift shops existed along the Outer Banks, they weren't as notorious as they are today. But we really enjoyed coming here. We would get Little Caesars at the front of the store or something equivalent there. If You know, my dad, he wasn't a person to eat cheese, so he wouldn't get pizza. But he would get, like, popcorn or a hot dog or something while we were there. And my mom was shopping around, and he didn't feel like it because he had a bad knee. So he would sometimes sit up front, and we would sit there. But... You're actually looking towards the beach shop side of the store now. They condensed it down over the years. This was, I remember back in the 90s, this was a store that utilized the garden 
shop area as not just a garden shop but a beach shop as well with all the toys and flotation devices and all that stuff and swimming gear and volleyballs and beach balls and stuff swimsuits that kind of thing and like I said I came here a lot and got a lot of things you even see beach chairs there but we came here and got a lot of uh, things over the years and not just po not just physical possessions, but I also have uh, possessions in my memory here from from this place. It, I know that's kind of weird to say, but yeah, memories basically is what I'm saying. A um, couple memories I have here, which are kind of funny, and get ready to laugh at this one. It's kind of embarrassing, but at the same time, I was a little kid. I was so excited to be at the beach, so excited to be at Kmart, and. I remember one time my mom was looking at some clothes and I'm running around one of those little four-way racks that they would hang clothes off of and I remember there was this like bigger lady there shopping just doing her thing me running around horse and around not paying attention I turned my head as I'm running face plant directly into her well let's just say chest <laughs> and I mean I, I wham and then I went right to the floor I remember that and she said oh you got to be careful little boy <laughs> Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, and I'm sitting there dazed. I'm just like, what happened? <laughs> I do distinctly remember that because it was painful and embarrassing. But one of the other funny stories I have from here as well was when I was really young. I think it was like the first or second year I was here. I might have only been six or seven. I was so excited there checking out the beach shop things with my mom and dad that I got lost from them to the point where they had to call for me over the intercom up at customer service and I remember when I finally did find them I'm in tears I'm crying my parents were very swole at me <laughs> but you know kids are kids I think everybody has a funny story at one point in time in their life from something that happened in a store and you know it wasn't funny at the time but looking back now uh, it's kind of funny like wow I really did that and my brother as a matter of fact I remember he actually got I think a, a toy skull bus here and it ended up going into the bottom of Oregon Inlet uh, which is south of Nags Head right where the inlet meets the ocean you go over the old Bonner Bridge or the new Mark Bass Knight Bridge to go to Hatteras Island we're at the Oregon Inlet Fishing Center and we're checking out fishermen throwing their catch out on the dock there and he took the bus and threw it right in the water and it sank and if it's still there today it's all rusty probably covered in barnacles too but anyway uh if it didn't rust away but yeah there was that and uh, you know even when i started coming here on my own in the early 2010s when i started making trips here by myself i actually got swim trunks here that lasted me several years and they just only recently started falling apart within the last three years and even then the store looked really nice they had the 0405 remodel here and I actually spoke with someone that was part of that remodeling team, and they, they missed this place. So, um, And I know they even had the Little Caesars up at the front, or the little cafe up at the front, which was open up until my knowledge of 2015, last time I was there. So I don't know, it must have closed sometime after that, and it's a shame it did. But it hurt to see the store the way it did. I almost didn't recognize parts of it. I mean, I did recognize it, but to see it in the condition it was in liquidating this being empty, it broke my heart. And I really felt for the employees because down along the Outer Banks, seasonal employment is great during the summer months and tourist season. But for people that live there to have to work year round to keep food on the table and a roof over their heads, for them, losing this store hurts. Uh, not only because they hate the Walmart that's up the street, but the people that shopped here that was convenient for them, it's in the heart of the business district. And for the people that worked here, now they have to look for another place of employment. And fortunately, going into the summer with tour season starting, people will hopefully be able to find jobs at places for the meantime until they can find something more permanent and, you know, in case something would move into this store. But anyway... Uh, I really 
feel bad that this store is closing. It's like a part of my childhood is going away. You know, I lost my father a few years ago. My parents and I and my grandfather, we stopped coming down to the Outer Banks as a family several years ago. And my grandfather passed in 2010. So it's like more and more throughout the course of time, uh, I've been losing more things. And to lose this Kmart just hurts as much. But I was grateful to come here one last time. Uh, Kayla and I were here for four days. We visited the store all four days. And I was grateful to show her this place that I, I called, you know, a mandatory stop, a destination on my trip. And she really liked the store, too. She's going to miss it as well. And, I mean, you guys don't know how much I'm going to miss it. This place meant a lot to me. And I really didn't think I would be coming down here in early March 2020 to film. And I thought I'd be doing it and under normal operations in the summer. But... Given the circumstances, I had to make the trip, not just for myself, but for you guys. I wanted to really share this store with you guys a lot. So I'm glad I was able to do so. And I really hope something will fulfill this place. I feel with the this building being in a prime uh, real estate spot on the Outer Banks, it's going to get a it's going to get a tenant very fast, whether they, you know, divide it up or they tear it down and put something new in. Only time will tell. And I'm looking forward to what that might be and hopefully the jobs it'll create. As long as they don't put those obnoxious, monstrosity, eight family vacation homes that the residents don't want any more of down there. Or those mini hotels. I know the residents are kind of sick of that. And I feel for them because those huge beach houses are ugly. Enough said. Put a business in that will actually benefit the locals, my friends and visitors when they come down to the Outer Banks. Walmart sucks right up the street. And I'm not bashing the people that work there. It's a source of income for them. But that store sucks. A lot of people that I know hate that store. And they like this store. And they're going to miss it. And they're upset that it's closing. And I feel for them. But <sighs> I hate to see it go. But... I kind of knew trouble was coming when this pharmacy that you're looking at right now and you're about to see inside of closed in 2018. My friend Jonas from Channel Boogaloo actually told me about it. And when I saw the condition of the roof, I said, wow, they really let this place go in the last few years. Not the people of the store, but ESL, Sears Holdings, Transform Co. This store made money. It's foolish that they closed it. So... April 2020 marks uh, the end for the Kill Devil Hills Outer Banks Kmart. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up narrating and I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of the tour from inside the store here. And stay tuned for what I have to say towards the end of the video because I'll have another version of this video where I don't narrate so you can actually hear the sounds from inside of the store. And let me know what you want me to do. I could put it on uh, Patreon. Or I could put it on my Facebook group. I don't know that I can put it on here on YouTube because it might claim it's a duplicate video and not let it upload. So I'll see what I can do with that. But anyway, enjoy and stay tuned for, you know, my outro and I'll talk to you soon. I have no idea what these things are. I told you it's a mascot. <laughs> if you say so. That's unbelievable. I love that table cover. I want that. 
That's such a shame. One thing I've always liked about this store was the fact that they had the little games and they even have the sunny day guides and coupon books and visitor guides and books here in this really big entranceway for this Kmart. You said it reminds you of Abilene. Mm -hmm. A lot. It does. I mean, this was a 90s build store, built around 92, I want to say, is when it opened. And I mean, just look at the doorway. It's reminiscent of those bigger stores like that, the bigger Kmarts. It's like Abilene all over. <laughs> I'm gonna miss this place. I've been coming here a lot of years, and this is the last time. Say, hey, you see my reflection in the in the screen there. <laughs> yeah, you got your visitor guides, the books, and an empty entrance. Pretty sad. All right, everybody. Well. That was uh, bittersweet, to say the least. While I'm happy to return to the Outer Banks and come back to this Kmart again, I'm sad knowing that after this trip, when I come down here, this won't be here anymore. Granted, this is the Outer Banks, and this place relies on tourism a lot, and this place makes a lot of money during the summer months. This building won't stay you know, vacant for long. I don't see it staying vacant for long. It'll fill up. Somebody will take this. And quite honestly, you know, I'm not one to, you know, root for competition to capitalize off of another stores like Downfall, but Target would make a great store here for the Outer Banks. They don't have any here, and it would compete with Walmart and give them a run for their money. But I don't know. I've always come down here, and this Kmart was always full of customers. The parking lot was always full of cars and that's not the case anymore and it stinks. So, oh well, we hope you enjoyed our tour. Sorry I had to mute out the audio uh, because of the music, but the music was so loud in there uh, I didn't want to get the copyright on there. But what I will do is I will upload an unedited version with the audio on uh, another like social media platform, maybe on YouTube, or not on YouTube, but maybe on Facebook in the group or on uh, Patreon. So if you're a Patreon uh, member, you can watch it on there um, or whatnot. I'll figure that out. So, but anyway, hope you did enjoy. It was painful to film this knowing that I'm not going to be here again. So, but anyway, um, Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. It means a lot to me that you watched the whole video all the way to the end. So, that said, guys, we're going to take off. And we'll talk to you later. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe for more content. And with that said, guys, take care. Stay awesome. And have a Kmart delicious day. I love how cheerful she can be. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Thanks, babe. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Yeah.